Hello and welcome to the first webcast in the Lean series. This webcast is intended as a precursor to future webcasts that will take this subject matter into greater detail, providing technical examples. But for today, this is a high level overview into Agile requirements traceability. So let's take a look at what we mean by requirements traceability. So typically in a project or a program of work, we'll have something, some kind of business case. Now the business case may come in many formats. It very much depends on the scale of the project and typically the cost of the project or potential cost of the project. Um, so this could be very lightweight or uh, extremely verbose. But what we do as a team is we break the business case out into what we call problem statements, value statements, and warranty statements. So a problem statement is an example or description of functionality that we're trying to provide that will resolve an existing business problem. A value statement is a statement of functionality that we could provide to realize a new business opportunity. And a warranty statement is a description or a contract between ourselves and the customer for ongoing levels of service that we need to ensure in place to make sure that that problem statement or value statement can continue delivering value. Problem statements, value statements and warranties again will be a subject of a different webcast. They're worthy of a webcast of their own. But what we do with those is we break these problem statements or, or value statements out into user stories. Those of you who've been working uh, on the Lean Prank program will be familiar with the format of these. If you're not, don't worry, we're going to be taking a look at those in a second or two. Um, and then we break the user stories out into acceptance tests. Now, what acceptance tests do is they provide a contract of functionality, a contract for functionality that must be satisfied to ensure that the user story has been met. So you can imagine at the very start of this process, We've begun what we describe as our ideation period, where we've taken our business case, we've broken it out into problem statements, we've picked off the most important problem statement, we've broken that out into our user stories, and we're starting to have a conversation with the customer to describe or to define what the acceptance criteria are for that user story to be considered complete. And then work begins. So as these acceptance tests begin to pass, then so the user story that is associated with those tests is considered to be complete. As all the user stories can become complete, then the problem's been resolved. And as the problems are all resolved, then the business case has been satisfied in this example here. And this mapping here of acceptance tests which prove a user story and which user stories address which specific business problem um, by going through this pro process, it is possible to demonstrate that you're delivering the business value that is described in the business case. And this is an example of requirements traceability. So to start, let's just take a look at a slightly more detailed example. So we have an example user story here. We're right at the very start. We're not sure what size this user story is or how long it's going to take us to implement. But what we have here is the story. As an internal examiner, I want exam results to be graded automatically so that candidates are awarded an accurate grade for their exams. This, these are the three really important pieces of information of this user story. Who it's delivering value to, what that value or functionality is, and the reason for that functionality here. So it's important to remember that a user story is just a placeholder for a conversation that needs to happen between us and our customer. So we begin that conversation with our customer. So we see here we have the team who have spoken to Jane, the internal examinations assessor. And Jane has described to us the rules for awarding grades based upon a percentage of correct answers. The number of questions in a paper can vary from 10 minimum to potentially any number. But the largest exam that Jane was aware of contained 110 questions. So when they look to calculate percentage grades, they use the following formula. So they take the number of correct answers divided by the number of total questions. They times this by 100 and grades are calculated as follows. So anything over 90% they give um, those candidates an A, anything over 75% a B and anything over 50% they receive a C. 
So this is the conversation that takes place. And at this point, we begin to get some idea of the complexity of the problem, and we award this user story an eight based upon this level of complexity. Now, we can do something to make these requirements a little more concrete and to express those requirements in a way that we can prove that we've met the user story because we'd like that user story to have some kind of executable specifications. These are tests that we can automate and prove that the functionality has been met. So we have here an example test table which describe these rules here with some concrete examples. So we can see the total number of questions listed here. We can see the total number of correct answers listed here and the appropriate grades. And the format for this is important because what we begin to do here is design also. So we have a calculate grade operation here and we have some potential candidates for arguments that would be passed to that operation to calculate a grade. And we can use this also in our agile modeling when we're designing our business services and our interfaces. So here we can see that we're going to have in our mind's eye some kind of business service host which calls calculate grade operation on this interface here which we're going to call a business service it's the i grade service it takes the total number of questions the total number of correct answers and it's going to return a grade and we're going to call this operation calculate grade so here we can see the, the transition from where we're beginning to gather our requirements to the process of design so assuming that we've done this work and we make that executable specification there pass we can take it back to the customer and at this point we realize that we've missed something so anybody over 50% is going to get a C but we're not actually sure who or what grades we should give to anyone who receives less than 50% of a mark so we have that conversation again with Jane and she then requests that okay so anyone who does not answer any questions correctly um, or zero questions they should receive a U um, so anything less than 50% is a U and anyone who answers no questions at all gets a U so to ensure that we will add that new functionality to our test table which we can see these lines here so we're saying okay these are our first rows these are our second rows that we put in and here we have the new rows so 10 zero correct answers is a U 110 zero correct answers that's also a U so we can now automate this test as well which we'll be going to take a look at in, an example of that in a later webcast using um, fit so but here we can see how we can iterate over our acceptance fixtures as our requirements mature and and our customer can see the functionality and grow the requirements so to put this into perspective from how do we manage this in the project here's an example of our um, scrum wall or our Kanban wall we have our user stories on the left here uh, this is raw before we actually begin our conversation but we've just captured those user stories go through some kind of ideation period where we're having the conversation with the customer we're working out um, what our interface designs will be what our potential tests are we get to the point where we write those tests but at this point those tests aren't passing they all fail this is an example of quite a mature process so then development proper can begin the tests begin to pass and the customer accepts those tests when all the tests have passed and the customer has accepted all of those user stories as being satisfactory then the job's complete so here we can see the progression of function of how we track the progress of those user stories across our Kanban wall so that's it for this first webcast it's a high level view um, the next two webcasts will take this example down into a bit more detail with some technical examples uh, with fit and also with any units